Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live and wanted to kind of go back. Uh, I know I'm a little bit late on speaking about this story, but there's more to the killing of uh, Abu Ibrahim than what people may realize. And so I wanted to kind of just quickly just highlight some of this and uh, catching up on the news that we're behind on ourselves here. But uh, Abu uh, Ibrahim that was taken out by, according to what we read in the uh, news media or what the mainstream media is pointing out is that uh, President Biden took the bold steps to have Abu Ibrahim taken out a senior leader of the ISIS militant faction in the Middle East there. Well, he happened to be an informant of the United States. Uh, he worked with the U.S. government. In fact, some of the declassified documents, uh, as you can see here in his uh, capture back in Mosul, Mosul uh, we can look at things about him, see things that were written about him. This is actually where his own statement that was given. Here he is right here, Abu uh, uh, Ibrahim. Uh, we can see uh, that he uh, says here, Umar, former Wali Masul, attempted to organize the joint military operations where he's giving information to the U.S. government about what's going on. Uh, he was captured in Mosul. In fact, right here it says, detainee seems to be more cooperative with every session. Detainee claimed that he is out of information and is anxious to know his disposition after questioning. What's going to happen to him? Well, he's going to become the leader of ISIS Caliphate or, or become one of the big leaders in there. And he is going to work for the American side there and overthrowing uh, the, the different factions that they want to overthrow, specifically the Shiite factions of Iran. This is what he would actually later become very famous for doing. But the question, though, begs as to why was, uh, why was he actually taken out? Uh, as we can see here in the article, Abu, Abu Ibrahim al-Hashimi of uh, Qurashi was considered the successor of Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. However, it is learned that Abd, uh, Abdullah Qadash uh, was detained in May 2020 in Iraq one way or another after uh, Qadash arrest. It was al Qarashi who was the leader of ISIS, although some experts have expressed doubts about the reality of Abu Ibrahim uh, and his identity. Uh, but he's actually used to be a leader in the, uh, the Islamic State, in the ISIS faction, and uh, to be able to fight for the Americans. Uh, and uh, so that's really what his purpose was, why he was involved. In fact, this article right here expresses uh, a little bit of that. This is back in 2014. Iraq is once again front page news, and once again the picture that is presented at the, as, to the U.S., in the Western mainstream media in, is a mixture of half-truths, falsehood, disinformation, and propaganda. The mainstream media will not tell you that the U.S. is supporting both sides in the Iraq conflict. Washington is overtly supporting the Iraqi Shiite government while covertly training, arming, and funding the Sunni Islamic State of Iraq uh, and Syria, ISIS, in other words, supporting the influx of terrorist brigades in Iraq is an act of foreign aggression, but the mainstream media will tell you that the Obama administration is concerned by the actions committed by the terrorist. Hmm. Did you notice that though? We are supporting both sides, including the Shiite factions of Iran, or in this case here, supporting the Iraqi Shiite government. Hmm. Huh. Does that make any sense? Wow. We always play both sides. So what was the deal then? What really went on? What is this all about this man right here? Why take him out now? Well, from what I understand, it was a chess move. And it was a chess move that has created dire consequences for the U.S. government. And of course, that chess move is against the chess masters, and that's Russia. Quite frankly, what it is, is Biden is a very weak president in the world stage right now. And something had to be done to put him back on the chessboard as a viable option. President Biden did not order the strike on Abu Ibrahim. That was done by those pulling the strings behind the government. 
they had to take out a senior leader of, official of the ISIS militants to look like we're doing our job and the President Biden is a tough president and able to stand up against the terrorism that's going on in the world today. That was one of the chess moves that we decided to make. I say we because we are all Americans, not we as in we are doing anything about this because we're not. In fact, what the we on our side, mean you and I, would be that they would stop all this nonsense. But unfortunately, it just doesn't happen that way. So I want to make sure I clarify that. So in other words, the we as the U.S. government has decided to make a chess move for Russia to make it look like Biden really is a credible president and that no, he doesn't have dementia, even though he does and that uh, he is able to make sound decisions in taking out terrorists out of the Middle East. But of course, it has caused a major backlash because the ISIS organization knows that the U.S. is the creator under the Obama administration of the ISIS whole entourage. So for the U.S. to kill one of their own, so to speak, has sent a very dark message. First it was al-Baghdadi, now, Abu Ibrahim. I'm sure they're wondering, who in the world is going to go in next? The U.S. puts us in power and then turns around and takes us out at their leisure? Think about it. Very dire consequences. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. Thank you for your uh, time uh, and be doing quite a few more videos this week. We are headed back home, so uh, please be tuning in and uh, we'll be updating you as quickly as we can, especially Patreon. We just uploaded uh, this video this morning, The Rabbits in Wonderland. And uh, basically, just it's really more of a compliment to the video that I did about the letter about the Clintons. But in this case here, I let you know their stake in Moderna and how that came about. Uh, and again, just kind of highlighting those things. So. Uh, I'll put a link to our Patreon channel here for you in the event you've not uh, become a member on Patreon where you could actually be a part of that group that we have there. And thank you, those of you that are. Uh, that is what helps support the work that we do. God bless you and have a blessed day.